This is USBI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for USBI News. I'm Emily Matson. As people across the country pause to remember the nation's war dead this Memorial Day, millions more took to the skies, roads, and rails on what may, may be the busiest travel day since the pandemic began. <laughs> The president and vice president observed Memorial Day at Arlington National Cemetery. President Biden laying a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier before urging Americans to remember why so many gave so much for the nation. They weren't fighting for self. They were fighting for the soul of the nation, for liberty and simple fair play, simple fair play and decency. Today, as we remember their sacrifice, we remind ourselves of our duty to their memory. It marked a day of solemn commemorations and remembrances from coast to coast. A return somewhat to pre-pandemic normality, like in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, where the nation's oldest Memorial Day parade returned after being canceled last year. To have the Memorial Day parade back again is you know, it doesn't sound like much, but it's a, it's a big deal. Also a big deal, the return to holiday travel. Packed beaches, crowded airports, busy roads. Signs this may be the busiest U.S. travel day since the pandemic began. Many crediting the nation's COVID vaccine rollout for a renewed sense of hope. To know that um, we can travel and be with family and hug a little better without being scared is a great feeling. A sense of cautious celebration. as a grateful nation remembers what and who made it all possible. And if you think gas prices here in the VI are high, you're not alone. Americans are sweating prices at the pump as they hit the Memorial Day, the roads this Memorial Day weekend. According to AAA, the national average price for a gallon of gas is just under 305 a gallon. That's the highest price on record for Memorial Day since 2014. Prices are even higher here in California, this video where this is being taken, and that's where a gallon of gas costs about 420. Some stations like this one in San Jose saw regular gas prices hitting almost 440 a gallon. The number of COVID cases in our neighboring territory of Puerto Rico are going down, but in not so good news, so are the number of vaccinations in the territory. And to help combat that, officials have opened up a vaccination clinic in the center of the airport. Our USVI News, Alanis Quinones, brings us more. With the purpose of accelerating the vaccination process in the road to herd immunity, the National Guard and the Health Department are placing new strategies to make the vaccine more accessible for the people. The most recent place this is happening is the airport. Please do not leave your vehicle unattended or parked on the terminal route. This is one of our, our, our efforts to vaccinate in Puerto Rico. What we're doing here is we're, we're outreaching to the citizens of Puerto Rico and those citizens that are, not, that are not from Puerto Rico to come in and vaccinate as they arrive in Puerto Rico. Our, our theme is vaccinate for you, for yourselves, and for the people of Puerto Rico. Everybody, with no exception, can get vaccinated in this center, no matter if they are residents of the island or not. Because of this, the vaccine that is being used is the one from Johnson & Johnson for its one-shot benefit, meaning that, for the moment, children can get vaccinated in this center. And that's what we're using, because we cannot keep track of, you know, the whereabouts and for the second, for the second vaccine, so we're actually we're using the, the Janssen vaccine for this effort. As part of the efforts, the plan is to expand these types of centers to other airports like the ones in Mayagüez and Ponce. But since their flights run on different schedules, the plan is to adjust according to the flights coming in. Plazas are also being part of the plan. For example, La Placita de Santurce will be vaccinating Thursday through Sunday from 2 in the afternoon until 7 at night. But the question is, when is herd immunity expected to arrive? In your personal opinion or in the National Guards, would you say herd immunity will be reached uh, by September as they're saying? Actually, we're looking more at the uh, July time frame. Uh, and, uh, we're, we're targeting the 31st July, but, if, but if, not, if need be, we'll be extending until September. The goal is to keep established centers like this to make the vaccine more accessible and hopefully to reach herd immunity by the end of summer or the beginning of September. Reporting from Puerto Rico, Alanis Quiñones. 
And as a reminder, there are several community vaccination centers in the Virgin Islands, as well as private providers that are giving the vaccines in the Virgin Islands. Now to Washington, D.C., the nation's foster care system was in the spotlight on Capitol Hill recently. Some lawmakers say more needs to be done to create a safer environment for minorities waiting to be adopted. Our Washington correspondent, Matt Knadler, explains. There are currently more than 437,000 children in the U.S. foster care system. 118,000 are waiting for a permanent family. For some kids, industry leaders say that dream does not become reality. Nearly half of them will not find adoptive families this year. That's what legislation introduced by a bipartisan group of lawmakers Wednesday hopes to improve. Their goal, to increase the number of available homes for all kids to enhance services for LGBTQ youth, and to decrease discrimination in the foster care process, including by marital status, for taxpayer-funded child welfare services. Nearly one in three children in foster care identify as LGBTQ, including Weston Gallo, now 21 years old, who says foster care saved his life. On the verge of suicide, my two dads saved my life. If my dads were turned away, I might not be here to talk to you today. Puerto Rico Congresswoman Jennifer Gonzalez Colon is the lead Republican on the House version. She says equality on this issue mirrors the equality challenges the territory faces with statehood. I cannot be against anything regarding equality, and that's the reason I'm supporting this. New York Senator Kirsten Gillibrand is leading this effort on the Senate side. She first introduced this bill 10 years ago. There are so many families who are ready, willing, and waiting to bring these children into their homes but are blocked from doing so by organizations that discriminate against potential parents based on their sexual orientation, gender identity, marital status, or religion. And this has to change. Lawmakers are hoping this effort will not only provide safer settings for young Americans, but also save more lives like Weston's. In Washington, Matt Kinadler reporting. In health news today, it's the most f common form of cancer in the U.S., but skin cancer can be prevented. Most cancers of the skin are caused by too much exposure to ultraviolet light, and protecting your body from the sun can help. Today, Mandy Gaither has the safest sunscreen practices for you and your family. Heading to the beach this summer, the pool, or just itching to go outside? Don't forget that sun protection. Whether it happens to be sunscreens, uh, UPF clothing, shades, uh, sunglasses, all of these products are going to help you protect yourself from the ultraviolet rays and from the damage that UV rays can do to your skin. Dr. Susan Massick, a dermatologist at Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, says when it comes to sunscreen or sunblock, you want a higher SPF. But she says once you get to 50, they're fairly equivalent. And people tend to not put on enough. Use one to two ounces to cover your body. You want to go ahead and apply about 20 minutes before you head outdoors. You want to reapply every two to three hours. And while spray sunscreens are convenient, there are downsides. Dr. Masick says there's a danger of breathing in the sprays aerosols and... They may not be a full coverage, so you want to make sure even if you spray the sunscreen that you still rub it into the skin. If you're concerned about chemicals and sunscreen, sunblock is another option. Which are the natural ingredients including titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. These are considered the mineral ingredients. These are physical blockers, so they basically reflect the sun rays off of the skin. Whatever sun protection is right for you, Dr. Masick says it's important to like it so you'll be more likely to use it. And just remember, too, in order to help save the coral reefs, there are certain kind of uh, sunscreens that have certain ingredients which are banned here in the VI, so you make sure you check out on that as well.